What's up guys, how you all doing? Today we'll be going over how I painted the Hero of the Sky bust. It's one of the models from Ben Comet's new miniature range. I think it's really cool. All the different sections were clearly defined so it's lots of fun to paint. I set myself a challenge with this one. I wanted to push the bar a little bit so I started off with the aim of trying to best Ben's original box art job. So I'm not quite sure I managed that but I gave it a pretty good shot. I tried to give each section a different texture to up the realism but today we'll be starting off with how I painted painted the skin. So I initially primed the model by spraying it with some Games Workshop Chaos Black and then once that was dry I used some Tamiya Super Fine White and I sprayed it from above at about a 60 degree angle just using little pumps of the spray can as I slowly turned the model around. That gives you this nice starting point where all the highlights and shadows are clearly defined. For the base colour we'll start off with some Fantasy and Games Resurrection Flesh and to that I added a small amount of Games Workshop Screamer Pink and a small amount of Vallejo Dark Sea Blue to desaturate the colour slightly. Starting with a desaturated tone will allow you to create a realistic finish. If you used a, a saturated colour you'd get more of a cartoony look. All the paints we'll be using on the skin are going to be ones that have a satin finish so that we can get a more natural fleshy look to it. You can see I used quite a big brush to apply the base coat, that's so as to minimise visible brush strokes. I also try and move the paint from the dark to the light areas to try and keep a bit of that pre-shading showing through. It's usually quite a subtle effect but it does make a bit of a difference when you're trying to build up your highlights and shadows. So it's always worth trying to retain that in your base coat. After a couple of coats of the base colour, we'll move on to the highlights. For that, I'll simply mix a bit of white into the base stone and we'll keep it fairly thin so it's essentially a layer consistency. Alright, so we're still going to be using that big brush and we're just going to pull the colour up over the cheeks towards the underside of the glasses. Then we'll pick out all these little wrinkles on the top of his head and on the top of his snout as well. Because the paint is quite thin, we'll do another layer just to make that highlight a bit more solid. For the next highlight, we'll do the same thing again. We'll just mix a bit more white and apply another layer of paint. So this is actually quite simple. There's, there's nothing fancy going on here. We're just trying to build up the highlights with fairly straightforward layering. You don't really need to highlight the chin here, I'm just sort of farting about. We'll be going over that area later with some pretty heavy shadows, so that highlight is going to be covered anyway, so you can just leave that bit if you want. I'm aiming to try and have the right side of the model a little brighter than the left, around this area here, just because the head is kind of tilted a bit to the side, so the higher point is going to catch more light. So we're going to give that side a bit more attention as we go on. Right, I've, I've got a little hair stuck on the surface on his cheek here, so to get rid of that, all I'll do is I'll, I'll use a clean damp brush and I'll just work it back and forth over where the hair is, and hopefully, if we're lucky, an end of the hair will break free from the paint. Then we can just carefully grab it and pull off the surface. If we were to keep going with the paint job the hair would become embedded in the paint and at that stage it becomes nearly impossible to remove it without doing something drastic like get, taking a knife to your paint job. So it's always best to remove it while it's still easy to do so. Yep, that's looking okay. We'll add some more white now and continue with the highlights. So we're just going to keep building up the highlights on those wrinkles. Alright, so I'll add another layer of that highlight colour. If you find that you get a hard edge when you apply the highlight, you can quickly grab a second clean damp brush and just feather the edge of the paint a little bit by moving the tip of the brush back and forth over the edge to get that colour to fade out. Alright, so it's the same again on the other side here. We left a bit of an edge, so we'll use that second brush to just blur out the transition. I'll make that little wrinkle here a bit more noticeable just by making the underside more solid. Okay, so when we're doing skin to this scale, it's important that the, the surface doesn't get too smooth or we'll end up with quite an unnatural finish. To combat this, we'll add a bit more water to our paint and we'll go back for some stippling. So we're just adding little dots of thin paint over the highlight area. When I'm doing this, I'm only gently touching the tip of the brush against the surface, leaving lots of little dots. And because the paint is fairly thin, these are going to fade out a little bit when they dry, which is really what we're after here. If you were to put these on thick, they'll be too noticeable and you'll lose that natural effect. So just try and be careful with the consistency here. 
On the other side, I've swapped my brush to a size 0 and we use a slightly thicker consistency this time. You can see that I'm testing it out on my nail here. So we use that to pick out the little crow's feet wrinkles around the side of the eye. The smaller brush just gives me a bit more control here. On the top of the cheek, I'm going to paint on a little round highlight. Then we'll thin that colour down to a glaze consistency with some water. And then just push the glaze over the edge to help blur out that transition. After a few passes with the glaze, what we'll do is the same as we did on the other side by applying lots of little dots around that area. That's going to help both blur out the edge of the transition and also create a subtle texture to the skin. Alright, so I've swapped brushes again and this time to a double zero to help keep the dots really small. I like to have a variety of dot sizes so that it doesn't get too uniform. Plus this can get a little tricky to do with a five. Alright, so it's the same sort of idea on the other side. We're just building up the dots under the eye there. We'll use that same mix again to start picking out all the little lumpy details around the side of the snout. Even though these are pretty small, I'm still trying to create a bit of a transition by pulling the paint over the surface, letting it gather at the top of each spot. And we'll do the same on the other side. We're going to be adding glazes over the top of this later to colour it, but right now we're just trying to pick out the little details. On the top of the snout here, we'll paint on little lines to simulate a wrinkled surface. And I'll build those highlights up a little bit more on the snout. The skin is going to look quite pallid at this stage, but don't worry about that too much. Once we add some coloured glazes, the look is going to change quite dramatically. A few more dots on the cheek there for good measure. Alright, we'll build these highlights in the forehead now. So I'm just trying to pick out any little wrinkles or folds. Remember that we want this side of the face to be catching more light, so I'm trying to push the highlights around the top of the eyebrow area and the cheek. There's lots of little wrinkles along the side here near the eyes, so I'm just trying to draw them out a bit more. Add a bit more white into your mix and we'll intensify the highlights a bit more on that right side. Alright, I think that will do for the highlights now. Uh, we're going to move on to the shading next. So we're going to start with some Vallejo Armour Brown and we'll thin that down to a glaze consistency with a bit of water. Now I'm going to use two brushes again here, both size 5, and we're going to apply the glaze to the lower side of the face with one brush, then we'll switch to our other brush and just draw the edge of the glaze up over the face away from the shadow. This is so that we don't leave any stains or edges on the surface. So we're going to keep applying this over a few layers until we get a nice solid shadow going. And I'm going to focus more on that left side, as we want that to be a bit darker than the other half of the face. Don't worry too much about pulling that second brush up over the highlights. You're not going to damage them at all when you do this. Alright, that's starting to look quite good now, so we'll continue by making another glaze, this time with some Vallejo Dark Sea Blue. And we're going to glaze that over his chin and the lower side of his cheeks to give him a nice 5 o'clock shadow effect. Remember that you can use your second brush to clean up the edge of the glaze if it looks like it's going to leave a stain or a bit of an edge. So just like you did with your armour brown, you're going to build this up over a few layers until you start to get a nice shadow. Alright, so now that we've built that up, we'll apply little dots of the glaze over the lower half of the cheeks there to simulate stubble marks. And you can go back and forth between glazing and stippling on the dots. If you do make a mess of the glaze and you're left with any little marks, you can actually hide them with your stippling. So this process usually works out quite well. We do have a little dubious bit here on the lower side of the cheek. So what I'll do is take some of the base colour and apply some stippling around that area to help fix it. Alright, so I think that's looking really good now. For the snout, we're going to take some Fantasy and Games Bal Crimson and add some of that to our base colour. This is a, a really intense red. You could also use something like Evil Sun Scarlet from the Games Workshop line. However, I quite like the Fantasy and Games paint because it has a slightly more shiny finish than the Games Workshop paints, so it's going to give us a, a more organic look in the end. So anyway, we're going to thin this down to a heavy glaze consistency, so it's going to change the colour quite quickly, but it's still going to be transparent enough that we can blur out the edge if we need to. 
and we'll paint that directly over the nose. So there you can see that the colour changes really quite quick. Apply that in a, a couple of layers, just being careful to remember and get the edges. And then after that we're going to paint it onto the side of the nose area, just over all those little lumps that we picked out earlier. And we'll use a second brush again, just to feather out the edge of the paint so that we don't leave a stain. And we'll do the same on the other side. I'll go in and apply another layer so that the whole nose area is nice and pink. So we'll make another glaze now, this time just with bow crimson on its own and we'll glaze that over the fleshy part of the snout at the front, just to bring out that red colour a bit more. Try not to go overboard with this so we don't really want him to end up looking like he's lost his sleigh. Okay, so once that dries we'll add some white to that pink glaze mix. Now white is generally quite thick so adding the paint should bring it up to a layer consistency which we're going to use to apply some highlights to the front of the snout. Alright, so I'm just trying to highlight anywhere the light would be catching and also pick out some of the little sculpted on details. Add a bit more white and we'll go back and apply some more highlights. I'll paint on a few lines to add a bit of realism, so maybe the little scratches or wrinkles. His nose probably takes a fair bit of damage when he's flying around in his plane. Right, so I think some of the highlights are a bit too sharp. What we'll do is just take some of our bow crimson and we'll glaze that over the snout again to knock them back a bit. We've also lost a bit of the details along the side of the snout, so we'll pick them out again using the same highlight mix we used on the front part. I'm just applying this to all the little boils on the side of the nose there. Oh, whoops, <laughs> a bit much there. I'll wipe that off with another brush. I'll also add a few thin lines near the front of the snout to add a bit of extra detail. Alright, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So that's the lower half of the face basically done. We'll do the rest of the forehead now. Take some Vallejo Armour Brown and we're going to make a thickish glaze. Then we're going to use that to paint in some of the shadows for all those little wrinkles. Again, you, you can use a second brush to draw the edges out if you think it's going to dry a bit funny. Now we'll take some Screamer Pink and we'll thin it down a little bit and we'll use that to pick out some of those um, spots on his face there. So like I said, we're going to have the paint quite thin for this and just hit the lower side of the spot to give it a bit of a shadow. Then we'll use some of the final highlight colour we used on his skin and just add a tiny little dot on the top of the spots. Alright, to make the skin a bit more lifelike, what we're going to do is add another tone in there using our Screamer Pink and we'll thin that down to a glaze consistency, which we'll then apply over the top of the cheeks just to rosy them up a bit. Again, you can use a second brush to draw out the lower edge of the glaze just to make sure it doesn't stain. Yep, I think that looks pretty cool. Adding the pink in there gives it uh, a bit more life. We'll add some more of that under the eye just to help round out the cheek a little. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. I think we'll just add a wee bit more there on the cheek. Yep, that's pretty cool. To finish off the forehead, we'll take some Games Workshop Baylor Brown and we're going to make a thin glaze with some water. Then we'll just apply that to the forehead. And again, you can use your second brush to just draw the edges out. I think we'll just do another layer of that and we should be good. the last thing to do is the highlights on the chin. For that we're going to mix a bit of dark sea blue into the base colour for the skin. Then we'll add a touch of white to lighten it. And we'll just use that to paint on little dots over the chin. Add a bit more white to your mix and keep applying little dots. 
Remember that we have the light coming down from the right side, so we'll make that right half of his chin brighter than the other. Mix in a bit more white and keep building up the highlight with your dots. Throw more dots, more dots, more dots. Come on, more dots. Okay, stop dots. Alright, so you can now go and make yourself a cup of tea and put your feet up for a well-earned rest. 